Good morning and Happy New Year, of course. A um, couple of verses for the first Sunday of 2021. Psalm 121, verse 1. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And then Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word, O Lord, your word is like a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Let's pray. Lord, as we stand on the cusp of another year, where on earth did the last one go? So much has happened, so much we've experienced, so much we have seen. And we recognize that for so many people, the hope of a new year is for a fresh start. We thank you that daily we have a fresh start in you. And pray that as we set our sights on the days that are to come, we will know how to shine for you, how to honor you, how to live for you, how to know more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. And so 2020 has gone. That's it. It's over. It's done. And many of us might be inclined to say good riddance to it as well, because it has been a year, hasn't it? In fact, it's been a year like most of us have never, ever seen before. And it did feel at times as though we were living in some sort of disaster movie. Do you remember when they said that all oh, UK deaths would be, well, initially they said probably in the dozens and then they thought maybe 20,000. Hmm. And we all thought, what, that? what 20,000? That's terrible. How could that possibly happen? And yet tens of thousands now seem such a familiar figure. But before we assign 2020 to the bin of history, perhaps it would be good to reflect on it a little bit and reflect on what it has taught us, what it has taught us about our relationship with God. I mean, we've got great hopes now for vaccine and so on, haven't we? But the times of lockdown, the times of isolation, the times in church was closed completely, the times when we were losing people that we loved. What did those times teach us about our relationship with God? Did we draw close to him or did we find our faith shaken it's not a wrong thing to have your faith shaken life shakes your faith it's what you do with that shaking isn't it and perhaps before we rush headlong into the new year and throw last year in the bin we should stop and think about that how did i respond what did it teach me about my relationship with god what do i need to set as a goal for this year as a result what did it teach us about our relationships with others? Who and what did we prioritize? When we were bulk buying toilet roll, none of us did that, of course. No, to perish the thought. When we were, well, whatever. When there were opportunities to care for others, to reach out to them, to love them, to support them. What do we do with that? And what do we need to learn? You see where this is going, can't you? For the days that are to come. And how about ourselves? What did 2020 teach us about ourselves? Are you, in an entirely appropriate and spiritual way, of course, are you proud of how you shone for Jesus through the crisis? Do you feel quite reassured when you examine the qualities that you showed when it was all going so wrong for so many people. What about the example we gave? Was it a good one? It's worth thinking about, isn't it? It's worth considering what we have learned because in times of crisis like we have never seen, it reveals a lot about the heart of who we are. And if we're going to go forward into 2021 in a way that is meaningful and effective in showing the reality of this good news that we have to those who are around us, 
we need to take a look at ourselves and perhaps we need to have a word with ourselves as well many people of course will be looking forward to this new year with renewed hope a sort of superstitious idea that somehow the world now has changed between thursday night and friday morning transformation has taken place and it's a brand new year and all will be well that somehow between last weekend and this weekend it's all different and of course that's nonsense isn't it i mean the idea that simply because it's a different day with an arbitrary change of year date that that will make everything better is a load of nonsense and yet we do it we wish one another happy new year i do it myself although perhaps as a christian it might be more appropriate for us to be saying i pray that in this coming year you will know the fullness and the richness of god in your life that might be slightly better blessing than happy new year mightn't it the reality is of course that the world will continue in 2021 life will continue as it has been people will be born people will die there will be successes and there will be failures there'll be acts of goodness and kindness and there'll be acts of evil and selfishness we may eventually get back to some sort of normal but the truth is, even when we get back to some sort of normal, there will be another crisis. Because there always is another crisis. Maybe not of the magnitude that we saw last year. But there will always be a crisis. There will always be something to trip us up. There will always be something to challenge us. Because that is the nature of the world in which we live. A fallen world. A world that is not perfect. A world where bad things happen as well as good things some of them we can predict some of them will take us by surprise some will be national some will be personal our future our security our hope is not found in a change of date it's not found in a new year a change of the seasons bringing an alignment of the stars our hope is not found it's not because of brexit or vaccine or nhs workers or other key workers our hope isn't even because of them although i have to say any government or indeed company that doesn't recognize the importance of investing in and recognizing the value of those who have put themselves out over this last year really i kind of wonder whether such government and or company is worthy of our support our hope our future our security doesn't come in these things though where does my help come from well psalm 121 verse 1 says my help comes from the lord now that's easy to say isn't it but it is a reality that needs to be embraced my help my confidence comes from the lord and whatever has happened in the last year in this year maybe i need to set a marker on that 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 will be my default position that will be the place that i run to when these crises come when these questions of faith come when these uncertainties come when these disasters happen when good or evil comes to me when i'm feeling great or when i'm feeling bad when things are going well or things are going rubbish my help comes from the lord there's a fascinating verse you know in the betrayal bit of the easter story Matthew 26 verse 46 Jesus says to his disciples rise let us be going see my betrayer is at hand it's a fascinating moment where Jesus knowing that he's stepping forward into uncertainty knowing that he is stepping forward into hardship knowing that he's stepping forward into suffering does so with consummate confidence and determination and peace I'm not always sure that I feel like that confidence determination <laughs> and peace 
when I ponder the days that are to come. So why did Jesus? If you read the preceding verses in Matthew 26, you discover that while the disciples slept, Jesus prayed. He prayed. Here's a thought to think about as we go forward into the year. Are you prayer walking or sleepwalking through life? He prayed. He had purpose. Jesus had a vision and a calling and an active sense of God's purpose in his life. And he was pursuing that. He stepped forward. Rise, let us be going. Why? Because I know what is needed for my life. I know the purpose that I'm here for. I know that God has a plan for me. I know that God is taking me forward into it. They were drifting. They had no clear sense of what they were about. And that's why when the challenge came, they scattered like birds on the wing. Do you have a sense that God is using your now? Jesus had a sense of purpose. Do you have a sense that God is using your now? Sometimes we are so busy waiting for the big moment of ministry to be revealed that we lose sight of his purpose for us today. Jesus prayed. He had purpose. And he had promise. The promise of God. The promise of the word of God. Jesus knew the word of God. And as a consequence, he knew that the word of God prophetically showed what God would do in his life. He knew what God was about and what God could accomplish and what our Heavenly Father could do miraculously through him. He knew that because he knew the word. I do wonder sometimes whether as Christians, the reason that we are so beset with uncertainties and insecurities and stumbles is because we don't actually take to heart what the bible says about what god can do oh we we pay at lip service i lift my eyes to the hills where does my help come from my help comes from the lord but then when it all goes horribly wrong we run round. don't panic captain mannery when we should be able to lean on the everlasting arms. Jesus had the promise of the word of God prophetically showing what God could do, but he also had the word of God calling him to a pattern of living that was laid out, that showed how each step should be taken and each situation should be responded to. Over the years, I've had people say to me, well, the Bible doesn't say anything about ABC. And that's true for an awful lot of the modern issues. I mean, the Bible doesn't say anything about, I don't know, the online abuse or, or social media obsession or uh, whatever you like, eating disorders or... <sighs> Take your pick. But what the Bible does do is give us a pattern of living that lays out how each step should be taken and each situation should be responded to. The Bible may not tell me whether or not I should do a particular thing, but it does tell me how I should respond to situations that tempt me or burden me or weigh me down. What governs our steps? What governs your steps? as you walk forward into a new year. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is like a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. And for those of us that have journeyed for a while, you've heard me say this before, but the reality of that was that the lamp was held on a long stick and it wasn't held up high to light the way it was held down in front of you like we would hold a torch walking at night so you can see where the potholes the pitfalls the trip hazards are so what governs 
our steps as we walk forward into a new year. Jesus said, rise, let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. And he walked forward into what was to come with confidence and peace and certainty. And he had that confidence, that peace, that, sincer- that certainty because he prayed. He had purpose that he recognized. And he had promise of the truth of God's word. As we start another year together, I just feel, really feel it's important that we realize that being a follower of Jesus is not a game. The world needs disciples who will show a difference, who will pray, who will have purpose, who will, have, who will live the word of life. That's what the world around us needs. Disciples who will deny themselves, take up their cross, and actually live a life of being a follower of Jesus. Over the last few years, there's an awful lot of people have been saying, I don't call myself a Christian anymore. Partly because of the overtone of history and, and, and you know some of the legacy of all of that. But they say, I call myself a follower of Jesus. But if you're going to call yourself a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus, it's not a game. It's not something to play at. Because the world around us desperately needs the word of life sown into their lives. And that's how we move forward with, into this year with confidence. That's how we come to the end of this year so that we stand here in 12 months time with a sense of achievement. That's how we build a faith that is strong whatever the storm. We pray. We see our purpose and we hold true to the promise, the word of God. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. So I went forth and finding the hand of God trod gladly into the night. Minnie Louise Haskins. I don't know what 2021 has got for us. I don't know what it will bring. I don't know whether the days will be happy or sad. I don't know whether we shall accomplish much or endure much. But I do know that if I will follow the example of Jesus and take time to pray, take time to value God's purpose in me now, be it small or large, take time to let the promise of his word govern how each step should be taken and each situation responded to. Then when I look back on this year and ask about what it taught me about my relationship with God, my relationship with others, and indeed my relationship with myself. It will be a positive moment for his glory. Amen. Let's pray. Whatever is to come, Lord, Whatever we find ourselves facing, whatever triumphs and great acts we accomplish in you, whatever heartaches, 
yearnings we carry in you. Help us to see that as we move forward, a people of prayer, a people of purpose, and a people of the promise of your word, you will accomplish in us your intent for your glory in the lives of those around us. Help us to take on board the path that you would lead us in, to hold your hand and to trust your way. Amen.